Happy day and welcome everyone. So today we are doing what is called the Dumas method of figuring out the molecular weight of an unknown gas, okay? Now, it doesn't start off as a gas. You would each get a liquid inside of a vial. And so right now I have about five milliliters and we don't even have to record that because it's an about value, but it's about five milliliters of some unknown volatile liquid, which just means that it's gonna vaporize uh, readily or rapidly, okay? So it evaporates quickly. The other thing that I have here is, well, I have the, the container that it came in, okay? So, um, but there would be multiple different ones here. Um, I've got boiling water going on right here, okay? Now, since we are in West Bloomfield at a little bit of a higher altitude, we're about 500 feet higher than sea level. Well, remember the higher you go, the lower the atmospheric pressure. And the reason for that is gravity pulls everything down toward the center of the earth. So if that's the case, then we know that if it's a lower pressure, water should be actually boiling at a lower temperature, okay? By how much? Well, not much. It's only about half a degree Celsius for every 500 feet that you um, increase, okay? So since that's the case, then if I look at this, now this thermometer is a, it's not mercury based, it's alcohol based. And so they really aren't calibrated perfectly. And so this does look like it's about 101, but we're not going with that. We're actually going to put that our water is going to be boiling at 99.5 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, just to kind of account for um, any error in that, that should actually help us out a little bit, okay? I also have an Erlenmeyer flask. I'll talk a little bit about the foil and what I'm doing with that. And I have a burette clamp, okay? And that's pretty much all we need. So let's just take a look at the... Okay, so the way that the Dumas method works, it just kind of explains here that we're gonna use the idea of a fusion where we put a tiny hole inside of this aluminum foil piece, literally just using a thumbtack. And then what we'll do is we know that a gas will end up taking the entire volume of a container. Now, this happens to be a 125 milliliter volumetric flask, but remember the 125, I don't know if you can see here, let me enlarge this real quick here it's 125 is right up to here. So if you're filling the gas up to here, that's where your foil is, then how can we figure out what the volume is of the container? Well, the easiest thing is using water. We can just fill it all the way to the top with water and then we can measure it that way. That's probably the easiest way. The other thing that you could do is you could use the density of water and you could weigh how much it weighs. Um, and But obviously you would have to subtract out the empty flask um, when you go to do that as well. Okay. Now, there are two ways of calculating this, okay? So we want to make sure that we have an idea of what are we looking for in the end? What's our overall goal here? Our overall goal is figuring out the molecular weight of the unknown gas. Grams, moles, grams over moles, okay? That's what we're really looking for. But if we can use the density, then there's an equation I really want to make sure that you memorize. And the equation is mutts kick the dirt over their P. So M mutts is for molecular weight. D is density, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature over the pressure. So mutts kick their dirt over their P, okay? So you just think of the mutts kicking the dirt over their P, and that's an easy way um, of remembering that, okay? So we, um, you're, you're going to need to do it in both ways. I do want to make sure you can use that equation. So what you'd have to do is find density first, and we know that density is simply mass over volume. So if I knew the mass of the gas, not of the flask in the gas, just of the gas, and I know what volume the gas is taking up, then all I would need to do is divide those two numbers and that gives me density. So R is a constant, T is the temperature, the temperature which would be of the boiling water that's in there. And let's just take a look to see, I'm gonna look at the weather channel real quick here, and it looks like we've got a pressure of 30.18 inches. Now, um, it could be different, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the value for that particular day, for that day in order to do your calculations. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write down here, I've got the temperature of my boiling water, so let's enlarge this here. Temperature of the boiling water, I have as 99.5 degrees Celsius. And then I have um, the room pressure. We said 30 point, let me just double check it real quick. It looks like it is 30.18 inches. Okay, so let's get that down as well. Don't forget, 
you are going to need to do a conversion for that and show your conversion. So in your data table, you're going to organize your data table. You want to make sure that your data table um, it doesn't have calculated data, so it's supposed to be raw data. Okay, let's weigh the 125 milliliter flask along with the foil. And so I'm just going to put these together, and it doesn't even have to be covered or anything. And we're looking like 81.19 grams, 81.19 grams, okay? All right, so let me get started here. Let's get my goggles on and let's get the hair pulled back just to make sure that we are being safe here. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to add my approximately, it doesn't have to be perfect, so approximately five milliliters of my unknown volatile liquid right into this flask okay so i put that in there and by the way this is a hood and what the hood does is it sucks up any gases that could be dangerous or toxic um so just for the sake of sound and you hearing me and stuff i'm going to keep it this way right now so i did poke a little teeny tiny hole with my thumbtack and so now all i'm going to do is i am just going to cover this up so you can see now what i don't want is I want to make sure that it's crimped on there really, really nicely so I don't want any gaps. Okay, and I've got this all crimped now, and now I am going to just get my um, burette clamp on here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it right into this boiling water right here, and it's going to go for quite a bit. So um, probably usually about five minutes, and then after that, I'm going to wait about three minutes. So once I see that the liquid is pretty much gone, so let me just put this in here while I'm chit-chatting with you now. Okay, so the idea is that what's going to happen inside of here is it is going to start to vaporize and we said it'll end up reaching like an equilibrium is the idea okay and so uh, it reaches an equilibrium with the pressure on the outside uh, surrounding pressure so what's going to happen is it'll fill that gas will end up filling inside of the container and then it should be at a point where um it is taking up the entire volume of the container okay so there are a couple of things with that that we're going to come back to so let's let this go right now and um, what should happen after is i'm going to pull it out and i can't actually even take it out even to look at it so i have to kind of look at it down here to get an idea of whether or not the liquid is vaporized and so i'm going to kind of shift it back and forth just to see but it is volatile so it shouldn't take too long it's got a lower boiling point um, most of the alcohols do have a lower boiling point. And so um, I'm going to do that. And then I'll run it under cold water. And once I run it under cold water, then we can come back and we can weigh it. And we've got two more pieces of data that we need. Okay. All right. So I will be right back with you. All right. So I've got it. I ran it under cold water. I have the condensate in here so that all of the gas, let's just weigh it. And then I can, I can explain this to you after. Okay, so it's looking like 81.56 grams. Everybody write that down, 81.56 grams. What is this? So this is now going to be the mass of the flask foil plus the condensate, okay? So 81.56 grams. All right, let's talk about this for a second. So what has happened is the gas filled up inside of here, kicked out air, kicked out anything else that was there, right? And so it filled it, and once it reaches an equilibrium with the outside pressure, then it stops leaving, it stops evacuating, okay? And so that's when a fusion will stop, when the inside molecules are spaced out just like the outside molecules are, okay? So then once I uh, cool it down and I turn the gas back into a liquid, a lot of times people have a misconception that gases don't weigh anything but liquids and solids do. That's not true. So by the law of conservation of mass, if I have a certain number of particles, whether they're in the gas, the liquid, or the solid state, they weigh exactly the same, okay? So you want to make sure that you have that down, that they do weigh exactly the same. So I took the gas and I condensed it which means it should weigh exactly the same in the liquid state as it does in the gas state, okay? Now, did our mass increase? Yes, it was at 81.19 grams um, when it was empty. And um, then when I added the five milliliters and obviously boiled that off, 
Then I took the gas and condensed it, and now we're at 81.56 grams, okay? So what's the last thing that we need? The last thing that we need is we know that this is a 125 milliliter um, flask, but like I said earlier, that is not the volume, okay? So um, I've got some empty space in there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fill this with water. So let's fill it right up to the top with water here. Let's see if I can do this without spilling. Okay, so I'm going to get it right up to the top as if like the foil was on there. So um, there's a little bit of air, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm like kind of above. So if I spill a little bit, it's all right. So I've got a 100 mil graduated cylinder here. So let's start. Now I know it's going to be more than that. Okay, so let's start with the 100 mil. So I'm going to pour it right in here. Oh, good. I didn't really spill. Okay, so I'm going to get it right up to that meniscus, right up to that line. There we go. Okay, so I've got my 100 mils right there, right at the meniscus. And then I have a 50. I'm not using a 25 because I know it's definitely a lot more than that. So let's go with a 50 and let's start pouring it in here. Hopefully it's not more than 50. Oh. Okay, so actually I'm looking at this and it's like right at 100 and. 49, I'm going to say 149, actually it's a little bit less, it's 148.5, okay, so we're going to go with 148.5 milliliters, not liters, milliliters, okay, so that's the volume is 148.5, have it, we've got the 81.56 grams, 148.5 milliliters, and using that, you're going to use both methods to try to be able to calculate what the molar masses of this gas. So which gas is it? And I've given you a selection of different ones. So once you calculate the molar mass, then just make sure that you indicate that. Okay. Happy day, everybody. Hope you had fun doing this lab as much as I did.